I'm glad you're here. That's awesome. And thanks for, thanks for taking your time on a Saturday to enjoy chiropractic one more time. You guys don't have enough of it, do you? So, are we good? All right, cool. So, um, what I want to, I, I was so excited. I got to be honest. I, I love working with students and young doctors that are going to be future doctors of this world. I mean, it's, it's an honor and a privilege to be with you guys, and I mean that from my heart. It's just one of those things that I'm passionate about, and that's why we came here on a Saturday to do this. Um, this is our building. This is the outside, and you're now seeing the inside. Um, Paulie just told me something very interesting earlier today. He's never had x-rays of his spine. Ninth quarter. Isn't that, isn't that wild? So I think that's amazing to see, like, the difference in education that I had, that Dr. Mulliken had, and to hear the experience my son's having and everybody else is having. So my, I'm going to, it's not a hidden agenda. My agenda is to give you a taste of what I know chiropractic is and what it's all about. It is so different than what you guys have experienced, but I'll leave that for a little bit. So with that, my name is Dr. Brian Selmanen. Um, if you haven't known that already, I've been practicing for 23 years. I do NUCA. I love NUCA. I also do a lot of extremity work. I've worked with little kids from a day old all the way up to 100. So all different ranges. NUCA doesn't allow us to, it, it um, opens the playing field, let's say that. It allows us to have this, what do I say, um, vantage point of so many different spines. And spines is what we work with. So when I was in school at your age, I was trying to figure out the best technique to figure out how we could work with people. And this is the most specific and unique technique I've ever seen. Have you ever seen this one? No. It's called the woodsman's technique. <laughs> so my wife and I took a nice trip um, about three months ago. We just needed a break. Um, and we went up to Dahlonega, got this little cabin. It was a really nice spot. Went to wine country, enjoyed some wine. And then we went to play frisbee golf. And here we are, she had a hip issue. And I'm like, I have no x-ray. I have no, no tables. And so I looked at the best table that was there. And it was this bench. And she's like, what are you doing? And I was like, I'm taking a photo. Stay still. And she's looking right at the photo, you know? <laughs> so um, this is not what you're going to learn today. You'll get enough of this somewhere in shape or form. But sometimes there's a need to move the bone, right? I mean, there is sometimes that need. And so just keep in mind, I love NUCA, but I do so many different other things within this world of chiropractic. I know how to do full spine. I know how to do extremity and all those things. And you're going to learn all those things as well. My hope is that you get a taste of what specific subluxation-based chiropractic is. That's what you're going to hear from me today. It might be totally different than some of the different things you're learning. And it's, that's cool. I do want you to hear this. Every technique is good. I will not down another technique. I will tell you the differences and let you guys figure that out for yourself. I'm not here to sell you this. I'm here to show you what I do. Okay? So are we good with that? Yeah. All right, cool. Um, we help people achieve a well-balanced life by providing gentle, proven care. That is our mission statement. That is what we filter everything through. That is everything that we do in this office. For 23 years, that's what we've been doing. And that, there's a lot into that whole deal, and you're going to see that through the presentation today of what that means exactly. NUCA. Has anybody ever not heard of NUCA, other than what Andrew said? Like before, before you talk to Andrew, right? It's new, right? What's this NUCA stuff? You know, nucum, nuclear, scary, right? It's like, what's the stuff, right? And then, so it's it stands for National Upper Cervical Chiropractic Association, and that's really geared towards an organization that morphed from Grostic. Has anybody ever heard of Grostic? Okay. Grostic's a little more known in certain circles, especially up north. And NUCA is an or a, giant, a pretty good oversized organization, about 250 docs that get together and do post-grad seminars. And our focus is to really, to, um, really understand the atlanto-occipital junction, to understand what's going on in that brainstem. Why is it there? And you probably have heard this already in a lot of techniques. Check C1. Check C1. I mean, at least check C1 because it's such a vital neurological area. And as I tell my patients, that's the router to the network. If the router's down when Andrew was young, it was never a good day. <laughs> Gaming is gone. 
never a good day. But um, so how does it help? So it, it, the basics is it realigns the spine by relieving the pre brainstem pressure. It allows our relief of communication, okay? So muscle, bone, nerves, ligaments, all that encompasses within what we're doing here. A lot of times we think, let's move the bone. So what? Who, who, who cares about moving the bone? What is that gonna do for you? I mean, it, it's, it's, it's what's aside from the bone, around the bone, and all that tissue. And I was telling a patient the other day, she was like, Doc, how do you, how do you move that? Because when you get adjusted today and you feel, the, feel the, the, how heavy it is, it's like, bam, right? No, no. <laughs> so pass something around. I want you to just pass this around and see if a telephone works. Just touch the person next to you. How heavy is this? How heavy is that? Pass it on. You think you can move a bone with that? I love the face, right? Like, come on, can't move it with that? I get that response all the time. When we were working with patients, they were like, how do you do that? When I'm, what I encourage all, uh, all you guys, all you young, young doctors in of the future to think about is all the stuff you're learning right now is gonna play into every single adjustment. I visualize the muscle, the bones, the ligaments, the nerves. I'm actually not even seeing them as skin. I'm actually, when I go in there, I can see the structure and how those ligaments are pulling and how they're tugging and how the nerves are wrapping around and the anatomy. And I, the thing that kills me is you guys don't get real bodies to cut into and look at and to dissect and to see how you know, the, the sciatic nerve might go on this side of the piriformis and then there's a de not a defect because people are created equal or uh, unique, but and they might go on the other side of the piriformis and that's a real thing that can happen. And then how do we work with that? So it allows also the soft tissue to work hand in hand with the adjustment. There is a principle who are uh, raising hands, uh, who's heard of this hypothesis? Okay, so the dentate. Yeah, <laughs> oh boy. Watch out. <laughs> um, so the dentate ligament quarter hypothesis, and I'm going to take a drink of water on this one because this is the dry part of my presentation. Just mm, bear with this. Um, dentate cord, ligament cord hypothesis. And this was presented um, by Dr. Grostick, and he came up with this understanding of the neurology. Does this bring back stress? <laughs> Please, I hope so, right? Now, have you, have you taken boards on this yet or not? I don't think so either. Uh, Central nervous spinal system, spinal, spinal anatomy. Really so really you'll get, you'll probably get a hit in second and third quarter. But I know you are, you're, you're COVID students, so it's a little like elusive what everybody's learned and stuff like that. And I hate that for you guys. So I'm going to get into just what of two of these. I'm not going to test you on this. I promise you. So don't worry about that. Okay. Um, the spinal cerebellar tracts, though, are really important with what we work with in the brainstem area in terms of the postural balance and the postural distortion that we will see in a nuca patient. Posterior cere spinal cerebellar, anterior spinal cerebellar, sometimes it's gonna be the spinal, the, the lumbar part of the spinal thalamic, which is more pain sensory, okay? It's, 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 it, it tells us, ouch, in our low back, you know? We, who does that with, who deals with that with the chiropractor? Every chiropractor. But when we get into the neurology of this, this is where it gets a little dry, so just bear with me, because I, I want to I wanna just go read through this with you. And I notice, can you see that pretty good? Is it a little yeah. fuzzy? I try to make it a little uh, psychedelic for you with the background, but. Um, so the, this dorsal part of the spinal thalamic tract, the posterior part, is transmit information from the caudal aspect of the, sp uh, the body and legs functionally. Although it's associated nucleus, um, which is Clark's nucleus, receives information from all parts of the body from C8 to L2, the information transmitted to the cerebellum within this pathway is something that you are unaware of. So it's, it's unconscious, you know, like we're just, we're living, breathing. I, I mean, are you, do you know how many times you, you just breathed in the last minute? No, that's sort of this sort of process, right? We don't know really what's going on in our low back. We're not thinking, oh, tighten this up, unless we really try to run and process it through an activity. The other thing is it, um, it, it, has, it goes to individual muscles in the, or, and groups of them is referred to as a non-conscious proprioception. Proprioception is our spatial awareness of how our body parts are moving. And it allows the cerebellum, this is important, to coordinate posture. 
and the movement of the lower limb musculature. You got that? Does that make sense? Awesome. Another way of saying that, you get a head injury. It puts an alignment here, it'll miss an alignment here, and all of a sudden muscles will start contorting and contracting without you even knowing about it. That's the biggest principle right there. Hold on to that one right there, okay? But now we have the anterior part of it, okay? So the anterior part is information conveyed in the ventral spinal cerebellar tract arises from the Golgi tendon out organs. Let me test you guys on that a little bit. What does a Golgi tendon, tendon organ do? What's that? Of what? Yeah, so it, it reflex hammers, yeah, it, it right? Yeah, it stops it from getting to... You're, you're on it. Both of you guys are on it. Tension, it stops your thing. So these are actually prevents our muscles from ripping off our body. So if I went over here because Dr. Mulliken needed me to pick him up, which I'm not going to try, and I said, oh my gosh, and he's too heavy, and my muscle can't do it, and, you know, I might be too weak, but if you didn't have that, uh, that sensory, your muscle would just whoosh, rip off the bone and you'd just drop them. Sort of crazy, right? So this track, if you go to the bottom, conveys information about the movement of the entire limb and adjustment of the posture. Interesting, right? So now we got two different aspects of the whole central nervous system right at the brainstem, the most lateral aspect, that actually controls our posture. It's pretty cool, you know? This neurological stuff works. You know, Dr. Mulliken was talking about a doc in Korea that comes over, he's a neurologist, and he started a whole practice of chiropractic because he's like, you know, I gotta figure this out. The, the part of the story that's interesting to me is all the neurologists I've met are amazing at diagnosing, but they can't do anything. They don't do any treatment. So I can see the pain in this one doctor from Korea. If you think about it, they're amazing at, here's the nerve, here's where it goes, oh, that's working, that's working, that's working. But chiropractic, you guys have the torch that you will take on and you can actually cure and help those conditions. That's amazing. That's the thing I do every day. That's why I get jazzed up. I get goosebumps still. 23 years of practice, I'm still getting goosebumps over that. So, have you ever, ever seen slides like this before? Yep. All right. Um, Dura mater, everybody know that? Pia mater? Who's heard of the dentate ligaments? Just raise your hand, let me see. So it's okay if you don't know it. I, I, this is why I'm catching everything up to this. Dura mater, pia mater, this is C1, um, posterior arch, you can see all that. And you can see the spinal cord cross section right there um, through here, coming up through. Um, the next slide I'm gonna get into will help you see what we're looking at is the dentate ligament. I was in the research department of Life University for two years. I did a lot of research. I've done papers um, on uh, nuca, upper cervical work, also thermal imaging, the Titron that you guys use in clinic and you're gonna use more in clinic. And so the paper and the thing, the studying that we did, I also worked with a doc named Dr. Hinson. Have you ever heard of Dr. Hinson, Roger Hinson? He's an upper cervical doc. I was back in Life University with Sid Williams. He's awesome, in my opinion. You may have different opinions, but I think he did amazing stuff for chiropractic, and I just, I gotta adjust Sid Williams, which is an experience, and he's like, boy, I need to be adjusted. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Come, over <here. coughs> Come over here, doc, and we'll take care of you, you know? He had a presence, let me put it that way. Um, but what we, Roger Henson was doing at the time, he was doing dissections, cross dissections and di dissections of the upper cervical area. And he was trying to study this theory that was there and trying to put some information and data to the theory that Dr. Grostick put in play. So we were doing doctor, uh, dissections of the dentate ligaments and you can see these dentate ligaments on, the, on C1 and on C2. And the dentate ligaments will cross section of, in the body to actually attach through the dura mater into the pia mater and traction the spinal cord. If you think of it as all these different bridges, the C1, 2, 3, 4, it actually supports the spinal cord in this cool matrix sort of suspension system. It's almost having all these bungee cords on you. Has anybody ever done the, what's that bungee jumping? You know, have you ever done that before? 
yeah, don't do it. I've seen a lot of injuries from it, but it, it's like that suspension system of bungee cords from the actual um, bone and holding that spinal cord so it doesn't bang up and t side to side in, into the bones, okay? And so when it tractions though, and here and here, you can see that the spinal cerebellar tract sits right where the attachment point is. Isn't that interesting? So when that actually pulls into that spot one way or the other and you have a distortion like this, and it can be rotational, and it can be lateral, it can be a forward and back, because that atlas shifts around and does different things, and especially at C2 and C3. And so that will create torsional tension or lateral tension one side or the other, which will cause what? Back to our original information about the spinal cerebellar tracts, what do they do? What is it? Proprioception, posture, balance, muscle control. So when you have irritation here, this is why we can see things change down below. So, autonomic nervous system, brainstem. I love these charts. They're in every room in my office. That brainstem, right here, everything down below, except for some cranial nerves, right? And even some of those cranial nerves, like vagus nerves, do you know the nucleus, trigeminal nucleus? That nucleus houses all the information coming up and out. So you can get not only pressure, it's not like a waterfall where nerve flow only goes downhill, right? It can go up and down. It can skip and jump. And so when there's pressure issues or irritation or subluxation to the brainstem, it can actually affect all this stuff. And I see changes in these things all the time. It's not like... Yeah, I think the most amazing, okay, I'll, I'll tell you this story. I wasn't going to tell this, but this is interesting. This was two weeks, uh, three weeks ago, a patient came in, she's 15 years old. And this patient, and this is not one of those miracle stories, we're not talking miracles here, we're talking science, right? I just want you to hear that. But when we talk about pressure on the brainstem, this girl had four head traumas within a year. And she, for two years, she could not control her bowels anymore. She was giving anxiety. She was on pain meds. She, well, she honestly wanted to take her life. She was really struggling with, with just everything because she was walking around the school with a diaper on. 15-year-old girl. Can you imagine being a 15-year-old boy or girl without function of that area? I said, I don't know if I can help you with that. I, I was honest. Cause I, just, I said, and I, I learned hard enough I mean, long, ago, long ago that you can't promise something that you don't know that you can do. Because if you don't do it, now you're just like, that's the guy that told me, sold me a bag of goods. But with this patient, I said, I'm going to do my assessment. I mean, we do a consultation. We do exam. We see if they qualify for x-rays. If they do, then we move forward and take care of them. And the thing we're looking for is pressure at the brainstem. And if there's pressure at the brainstem and we measure it and we adjust, it's amazing what happens. After the first adjustment, she went back. We do a two- to three-day follow-up afterwards. Comes back. She had control of her bowels. But she still was wearing the diaper because she was just waiting for it to go. After a week, still control. Two weeks, she was out of the diaper on her own choice. That's amazing, right? That's vagus nerve. That's controlling the bowels. And so when we do it, and all, again, I say it very lightly, all we did was tickle that little whisper of an adjustment right up here, very specifically, very pointedly in the right direction. And if we can get proper function back to that, that lateral subluxation, that is where we see these things happen. The science part of it, okay? Any questions on that at all? Okay. Okay. Whew. Science time is over. I saw some people yawning. I understand. So I get it. So it's just it's, it's the, uh, the uh, get that out of our systems, okay? So now we're caught up in the science and neurology part of um, NUCA and what we're doing. Um, NUCA is knowing and, and this is where I'm going to talk a little bit about the differences of what we know um, within NUCA and how we do it. So NUCA is knowing. It's, it's, it's knowing where the body is positioned in a gravitational field. So if you take an XYZ coordinate system, the Cartesian grid system, you know, plotting everything, we basically plot the spine with a lateral cervical x-ray. Um, we do take some flexion extensions for injury. A nasium Okay, this is the nasal view, and you've probably not seen this too many times outside unless you're doing upper cervical work. We're measuring the skull, the tilt with this yellow line. We're measuring the atlas, which sits right here like a little bow tie. 
okay? And that's the plane of that. And then we're measuring the central uh, nervous system. So we're measuring the, the neural canal with the lower line, okay? And that's one part of it. And then we have a vertex. Who's that? Who's, have you seen this one before? Oh, yeah, yeah, toggle. Yeah, exactly. So toggle, they use the ADP open mouth. We use the nasium, okay? And so this actually is the atlas right through here, the dens, and we're measuring the center of the skull and then the plane of atlas, but we're also measuring the C2 neural canal, which is right through here, okay? If you look on this model here, there's the atlas, and it sits just like that, and we're measuring also the C2 canal right there, okay? So we plot it on a three-dimensional grid system, and then what we can do is we can measure, here's before, and here's after. What do you see different? Tell me what you see. How would you, what would you say to your brother or sister in chiropractic? I see what? You see the lines different? Mm -hmm. Do you see how it's, the person's leaning over here? Do you see how straight that is? Isn't that cool? And that was, um, that was two days ago. That was 27th. Okay. This is not my greatest and latest. I mean, this is not like, oh, 23 years of chiropractic, and I have three cases of this, and I'm going to show you a nice seminar to show you this and sell you this, okay? This, that's what I'm saying. I had those guys try to do that to me. This is a couple days ago, and this is what we see every day, every patient. We're goal, our goal is the green line is where normal is, perfectly vertical. Once we get it there, we're good. And then we monitor, and if it needs to be recorrected, we put it back, and all of a sudden it falls. And then we put it back, okay? And then we give re-educating exercises and therapies at home so that the person can get stronger with muscle tone and all that. So we know there's muscle, bone, and other things other than the nervous system too. So it goes reverse. We know that we have to address the subluxation in order for those other things to function. Here's another one. See how crooked? Off to the side. You see how straight that is in the middle? Now there's a little bit head tilt still on that one. But we're trying to reduce that pressure on these patients and you can see here, here's another example. And then coming over here, see how straight that is? Isn't that cool? We can actually measure it. We don't have to guess. We don't have to be blindfolded with the body. You know, um, back to Paulie, I don't mean to call you out again, but you know, if I worked on you and I didn't have x-rays, what's underneath? We don't know, right? Today you're gonna find out. That's gonna be fun. It's gonna be really so many schools today, which is sad, 30 years ago, chiropractic schools told you to x-ray, 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 I mean, because you got to, like, see, see. The sad day as I go around the country, so many chiropractic schools are, are going away from that. And I was always taught by Russ Earhart and now Terry Yoakum, hey, image whatever you're going to work on, because that's the truly way you can really get an understanding of it. Yeah. I mean, if, if you go to school for learning the muscles, bones, ligaments, and nerves, organ tissues of the body, why are we going to put all that in play when we're actually working on the body? That's what I say. You know, it's just like, I'm getting back to the anatomy thing. If we're going to have hands on a body, how can we not have a body to study, to look at? You know what I mean? The cadavers. The cadavers, yeah, with cadavers, you know, with hands on cadavers. And I get the theoretical, but guys, you have had enough theoretical, and that's, that's why I'm trying to keep this as short as possible because I want to get your hands on some stuff today. You know, and, and, and I love Jake who's in, and Polly in the back. They're just like, wow, this is, this is different than school, you know? Yeah. And I love that already. You know, we didn't even do much. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's so cool. Um, patient, severe migraines, 20 years, dizziness every day, nystagmus, female, 63. Um, here's the correction. It was resolved. Nystagmus, you know, eyes going back and forth, dizziness. The other patient, 66. You can see the correction over here. See how straight it is on there. Age 66, female. And I don't have the symptoms up on here, but because I, I really want to, we can we have plenty of that to talk about. But um, my question to you is this right here: Is nuca a full spine technique? Yeah. You say yes. It's okay. You say no. <laughs> I see your. I see I it. Know it's up to service, <laughs> but because It's good, and it's based on what I said, though, right? And it's probably sometimes hard. It was hard for me to swallow, just, just so you know, because I was thinking, like, you're touching me here. It's not a full spine technique, guys. We have to adjust every single segment of the body in order to be full spine, or at least lateral, the, the, the thoracic, the cervical, thoracic, and lumbar, right? 
or a hip or extremity to be full spine. But that's, I want you to hold this just right there, imprint it, put it in your brain, all right? And answer that question by the end of today. Age 14, scoliosis, 16.1 degrees. Here we go. Um, so here's a 75-year-old um, female, right, or male, 75-year-old male, and has a fusion at C5 and 6. That's total fusion, surgical fusion. And 7 degrees, 4.8, went down to 4.4, 4.1. So we're seeing changes in the spine below. Here's a 16.1. Scoliosis, teenager, 14 degrees, 16.1 degrees curvature. That anything over 10 degrees is a scoliosis. Goes down to six. Cure to scoliosis. 23.7, 15.9, 13.6, You guys excited yet? We're only doing this, guys. Right here. Only up here. 17 point, I mean 7.2 to 11. 1.9 over 7.6. This is what we do. I'm showing you enough to get in your brain that this is not just happenstance, okay? 9.6, 4.6, 7.2, down to 6.6, age 17. Look at this. Look at the difference. Age 66. Age 66 years old. How bad is this case, okay? That's, that's the question. From what we talked about so far up in the upper cervical region, and what we talked about how to measure it, and we use those films from NUCA to actually measure it. Here's the lateral cervical. The curves, what would, how would you describe that curve compared to what it should be? Straight, flat, military neck. You probably have heard that terminology before, okay? Based on what we talked about, is it pretty straight? Up and down? Not terrible, right? Eh, sort of. 1.83 degrees of pressure. Anything over 0 0.5 is significant. And I have turned people away. <gasps> you turn people away? Yeah, because you don't qualify for what I do. No, 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 no. Everybody needs in a chiropractic adjustment. Everybody. No. In my opinion, you don't. Um, at least not an upper cervical adjustment. Maybe there's some other stuff going on. But there's a qualifying process for what we do in our office. We don't just accept people as patients. Now, today, you're students. Everybody's accepted because we want to see your spine, okay? Whether you have issues or not, but my, I guarantee, after being in school and practicing on each other, you have issues, okay? <laughs> okay. Here's the vertex, okay? So how bad is this? Eh, you know, there's rotation of 2.8 uh, degrees. So, I mean, there's some twist. But how bad is it? Here's this correction. It doesn't look like it changed much, but the, re the pressure's going down, which is good. The rotation went from 3 down to 1.86. We're reducing the subluxation. This is how bad it is. Who's ever seen a spine like that? That's the other half of the body. This is a week ago. Okay, I wanted to bring some, like I said, just what we're doing. Monday morning, less than a week ago, man. 60.7 degrees is the largest in my practice, guys. The largest I've ever seen. 46.5 is pretty significant. I have a gentleman that's uh, in his, now, now he's in his mid 60s. He had a 54 and a 55 down below. And that's significant and he never had surgery and he lived his life and by the time he saw me, he was gonna go under the knife because he was just hurting and in pain. So he came to me at in the late 60s or early 60s and said can you help me and I said let's find out took all the pain away just adjusting here right getting that adjustment and saved him from surgery and he's never had surgery since and I've been seeing him for 10 years now so just monitoring making sure Monday we saw her Friday we did this Monday Friday what do you guys notice? Yeah. And look at the hip leveling. All from up here, upper cervical adjustment. So back to my question, is NUCA a full spine technique? 
Yes. And it's a neurological full spine technique, and that's what I would tell you. It's not just moving the bones and structure. And I'm not saying that's the wrong way of going about this. It's just another way. And if we never cleared out that, what they call you guys call it a primary subluxation, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, and then the secondary, tertiary. So if they don't clear out that primary subluxation and they started going after the low back, which we have a lot of those patients that come in and like, ah, they've been my back, my back, my back. They've been taking x-rays, MRIs, and all this stuff. Uh, just nothing's helping. Well, let's look, let's look at the whole body. So when we do this, you notice we take full spine views of everybody take just an upper cervical and some of my colleagues do right or wrong doesn't you know that's that's their decision but I like to see what's going on underneath the spine because if, when we go back to this original um, misalignment at first glance it doesn't really look like much except for this little hook down here we're missing a whole bunch of stuff going on down below okay and this is where I'll bring in some rehab exercises and later on and all that stuff you know what the uh, medical doctor told her they said, touched her back, looked at her, and said, you need to go to this surgeon. No x-rays, no measurements, no MRIs, no CAT scans, nothing. No imaging of her spine to say, you need to go to surgery. Whew. Surgery. They would put Harrington rods in there. I've worked on patients with Harrington rods where they, you know, have you ever seen that, have you ever seen that surgery live? It's brutal. I mean, they have these tongs that they crank up and you see the spine shifting and they straighten it and they fuse it down, pack bone into the back of it and they fuse the whole spine from T1 down to T12. And that's what she was gonna have to have done in their mind. But how did they even know? They didn't even assess this to know what was going on, you know? So to have that correction, those reductions, four degrees on top, about two degrees on the bottom, that's huge for her and she was so elated the mom was in tears. She stood, and when she walked in, she was like this. This is how she stood. And after she did it, she was like this. She's still crooked, guys. I mean, she has curvature, but all of a sudden she's like this, and now she's standing up tall. And I talked to her um, on Friday, and she, I said, have you, I know your mom's noticed, but has anybody else noticed? She's like, yeah, my best friend. And, she, and, she, and I was like, what, what happened? What did she say? She's like, well, she knows I'm going through it. I have what I have. And she's just like, you're, you're standing taller. Oh my gosh, 11 year old girl, you know? And then here's the cool thing, what, we're, what, what I love working with this age, like we do a lot of screenings, nine, 10, 11 years old. And if we can get them at that age, they're still growing. So if I can get this to stay in that position, they can potentially grow out of it more. And we see that all the time where they actually get better and better and better as they grow, as long as they're under care. But I was up front with them. I said, this is a lifetime process. This is not just a one hit wonder. And I know it looks good today, but this is, I was just up front with them. And they were just like, whatever, doc, whatever. If you detect and correct the subluxation, detection is the biggest thing. And you've had all those segments. And you remember, you, you've probably been on your buddies <laughs> when you can't move the bone. You know, like, keep on hammering it. Why isn't it moving? Why isn't it moving? Well, I, I would hazard a guess that you probably are not detecting the right place. <laughs> okay. But then those ones that you just go up and you're just like, oh, wait, it moved. I didn't even touch it. It just went. Those are the fun ones, right? Well, you just detected the actual subluxation and which way you had to move it. Isn't that cool? So that was results in less than a week, <laughs> four days, which is fun. We usually take that film in about a month, okay? And then we see those changes and we watch. And we take another one usually at three months. So I was like, you know what, this is a very unique situation. I knew you guys were coming in. I was willing to put my, my skills on the line to see what Nuka does. And that's what we saw, it was so cool. So, and also I want you to know this, is Nuka is for all ages. From three years of age, to 47 years of age, to 72 years of age, you know, we do a lot of different ages. Um, it's an interesting thing is, a patient might be seeing me for a while, and all of a sudden they have a fall. And we can actually measure the difference of their misalignment. You can see the difference here, how it's up, a little more vertical. You see how much further off this one is? That's because they had a major head injury. And so we had to remeasure. So the same information doesn't always work for that person over a lifetime of care. So that's something I also want you to know is that we wanna make sure we measure if there's a new trauma. And that's what we look for, we look and measure that. And then we can see the correction. You see how off that person was? Do you see the difference now? 
And so that frees up the subluxation of the atlas. This has already begun. I was going to surprise you with this, but <laughs> my gift to you guys is this. My gift is x-rays. Um, we're going to be doing some treatments. We're going to be working on each other. I'm going to teach you how to do that. We are going to do some things to get, well, I think uh, we have four so far, but um, lateral cervical, we're going to take a vertex. This is what it looks like. So you'll be in these positions. We use headphones to actually stabilize the skull because we need very pinpoint measurements, millimeters and degrees. I hate to say this, and this might turn you off, but we're sort of the pocket protecting geeks of chiropractic with a cool spin. I, I would just say, we measure everything, you know? Um, and you'll see the actual full spines that we do. Um, you saw some of the examples of that. But today, basically, we're just gonna learn to hit the ball. That's it. But it's gonna be so much fun because you're like, oh my gosh, what do we do? You know, we're, gonna just, we're just gonna get in there and get your hands on. Because how much hands on have you had since you started and you're doing it nine quarters so far? Not much, right? Not, Not much. Enough. So that's what we're here for. We're going to do a posture check in just a little bit. We're going to take a break in just a second, but um, we're going to look at head tilt, uh, neck tilt, high shoulder, high hip, anterior rotation of shoulders. And what I would encourage you, we're going to do it in teams. We have like teams of two. Um, and what we'll do is we already have you paired up. So um, we're going to bring you up and we'll do, we're going to go through that as a team. My, my team here is going to help me. And then we'll get all the measurements for that. If you're not being measured, look at each other's Posture, higher low shoulder, head tilt, higher low hip. Andrew's been around the block enough to know what that means and looks like, so hit him up on that too. Dr. Mulliken knows that. He's seen 20 years of practice and plus, plus, plus <laughs> examples. You know, just, it, it, just pr look, at each, look at each other. It's no problem. Um, but we're going to get some measurements, and we're going to look at leg checks. Um, leg checks, are, we're going to use this table here. And like I said, the hardest thing... It, it, to, to understand is how gentle this is going to be. You know, you're you're going to want to really push. When you think push, think pull. It's like push to pull. It's, it's a weird concept, but you know, I'm going to show you that. I'm going to have my hands on your hands when we're working on each other and getting you in the position. Um, the other thing I want you to know is when we do this, as we start adjusting, is I need you guys to start stretching your hamstrings. Okay? Just start warming up. You know, get the blood flowing, you know, maybe do some squats and then literally you're going to need it. And it, it takes a lot of energy to do NUCA. Um, I'm not saying the spiritual energy, I'm saying physical energy. Like you're using big muscle groups, the glutes, the hamstrings and, the, and your back. And you're getting in this position where you're bent over and you're going to be there for a little bit. And the thing is, it's like an isometric contraction where you're just holding it. It's sort of like yoga. First time I did yoga, I was dripping. <laughs> It was harder than most workouts I've ever done. Um, so anyway, this is adjustment. This is sort of what it looks like. Um, you know, that's Trent on the table. So let's play ball. All right. You guys in for this? Yeah. All right, cool. So at this point, um, I want to go through just one, th one more thing. What does football have to do with this? Oh, sorry. <laughs> Bad throw. Here. What does football have to do with this? What do you think? So you see some, you see some, what, what is it? It is a contact sport. Yes, that's, I like that. I like that. So um, what I'm not going to really get into a lot of today, and I'm just going to give you a brief understanding, because that little touch is not where the magic happens. It has to do with all the physics behind the adjustment. So when we have a table like this, this is a NUCA table. The NUCA table, we're going to put the patient's head down on that bar. Okay? There's a bar here, a flat bar, a round bar. Again, I'm not going to get into the details of that. If you want to learn more, I'm here over time. You know, we're going to do another one of these in about a month. Um, but what we do, it, we have to balance the head in different positions, and we use the head as a lever to actually allow that spine to realign as you're working on the atlas at the same time. If you think about, if you, if you brace this and then the atlas is free floating, it doesn't take a lot of effort to move that, one, uh, that two ounce bone and the other ones down below. And we're not just moving atlas, we're actually moving the whole cervical spine at once. But if the head's kinked up here and I adjust here, what will happen, it'll start going this way and then the other spine will realign. And it's all based on the physics. 
and again, fulcrum lever. fulcrum lever, yeah. And there's different lever systems that we talk about. Again, I don't, I don't want to get into that because I just want you to hit the ball today. So you just have to trust me on that part. I'm going to set up everybody for that part of it. There's a lot involved with that. What football has to do with it is if you go to the seminar at some point, they'll talk about the balancing the football on the bar. But if you don't balance the ball, boom, right? If you don't, if you goes, um, if you use angle the headpiece this way, and you have it here, and if the fulcrum's just south, it goes that way. So the ball is an example you'll see a lot in Nuka. They use this to help you just sort of feel the balancing points. So if you want to play with that a little bit, just you know, be able to balance the ball, or balance it on here. You know, see, see if you can get it to sit there, and then oh no, you can't do it. You know, so um, and you, this I have the skulls here too, just to play with. But that's what we have the football for. So it just helps you understand the physics of the adjustment is not just X-ray, it's not just measuring, it's not just the adjustment. It's all this stuff that it's, it's, you keep on going into it. It's, just, it's pretty cool. A lot of physics behind it. A lot of physics behind it. Like yeah. And yeah. That's all that the trigonometry we use within the system. And then we're going to also show you x-ray analysis. So what we're going to do is um, pull people back. We're going to take a quick break, pull people back, we'll keep on taking x-rays. But the majority of everybody else is going to be in my tight office. <laughs> it's really, it's not that big. Um, my whole theory in th setting up a practice is not to having the biggest office on the block. My office, I want it to be so small that I don't want to be in there, so I'm taking care of patients. That's how I set up my whole practice. But we're going to try to cram in there, push my desk aside and all that stuff. So we'll go in there and we'll start analyzing through all the films. Once it's all analyzed, we'll take another break and then we'll go ahead into another room and we'll all adjust with each other and we'll put people up on the table and go through it. Okay? So everybody stand up. <laughs> So what I want you to all do, um, if you need to move forwards a little bit, um, go ahead and move your chairs forwards just a little bit in the front row because you might need it. So I just want you to guys just to sort of bend over just like this, keeping your back straight. It's almost like a, a deadlift, you know, or a Romanian deadlift. And come back up, and then just down, and then up. And just get those hamstrings warmed, okay? Just do about four or five of them just to get that moving. It'll help elongate the muscles back there get that going okay do a little hamstring stretch one leg forward move the toe back and forth okay if you feel some burn already <laughs> it's a good thing <laughs> all right <laughs> you know leg day if you had it like trent and i did um that was a that was two days ago you can feel a little bit do some quad stretches that's good do a little torso twist here get some blood flow moving in your body it just loosens you up and everything. So now, the adjustment itself, put your hands up. You're gonna cross, if you're right-handed, the left-handed, do you have all right-handed here? Right. Right, right, right. So just, just for right now, just take your, use, if you're using your right hand, you're gonna take your other hand and just cross it like that, okay? Just right there, do you see that? Okay, just like that. And you're just gonna grab your wrist, just like that, okay? Now put it out in front of you. That's good. Don't worry about that. We're just going basics. <laughs> we'll get to that point. But basically, that's going to be the position you're in. Now remember that hamstring position that you had? I want you to just go down into that position. Excellent. We have some tight hamstrings back there, huh, Jake? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so do you feel that? So keep your hands in the position. Now go back down in that position. All right, come back up and keep it out here. Now, what I want you to do here, when you're in the position, <clears throat> I'm going to be moving your hands where you need to be, but I don't want you to allow me to go like this or this. you got to keep it sort of like a robot, okay? But you can go up and down. I might have you go here, 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 different places. And it's going to be a, what we call a straightaway stance because that's the easiest thing to learn in the beginning. If I have a, a line of drive like this, and my line of drive is such, I want to be in line with that with my feet, okay? If my line of drive is over here, I got to put my feet over here. So you're basically putting your feet perpendicular to your line of drive. And I do have one of these in the other room. It's a bigger stick. So if you don't do it right. <laughs> so do you hear that? Does that make sense? Any questions on that? So again, let's go do it again. Just go ahead, arms out, down in the position, and then just be in that place. Move your hands forward and back just a little bit just to see what that feels like. 
so you get used to that feeling. Okay, and you don't want to have really a bend in your knee. In your knee, if you're tight in your hamstrings, you might have to. I'm gonna have to bring the table up a little bit for you, so we'll work with that. But that's the adjustment right there. The last thing, um, rhomboids, muscles between the shoulder blades. So if you pull this back, your shoulders like that. Try that. Okay, those are the main muscles we're working with, and this is very general. If you look in the Nuka textbook, it won't talk like this. I try to get people to hit the ball first, and then we go backwards into the details of it, okay? So in that position now, try this. This is the complicated part. So now, how do you contract your rhomboids at the same time your hands are forward? Yeah, that's good, that's awesome. That's really good. Excellent, pull it back. Yeah, good. So uh, can I critique you? Just stay right there. So instead of pushing forward, I want you to squeeze right here. Yeah, there you go. You see a little different, right? So let me see. Excellent. Another way of doing this too, to really get it, is pop your chest, okay? And then contract, and that's gonna give you a really solid place of adjusting, all right? So now, let's go down in the position here, and then contract. All right, cool. Now, one last thing I'm gonna tell you, and then we'll take a break. That excursion on your adjustment should only be that much, okay? It's not like a movement. You should, honestly, you don't even see it move. So I'm gonna show you an adjustment and what it looks like on this nice ball. And that was the adjustment. You see that? So think small. Think light, think that contracture but it's almost, you have to think about it in your mind more than even doing the work. So let's try that now. Go down, in position. Okay, do just a slight little breath of a contracture. And Doc, I know your knees are probably getting a bit, I want you to flatten your back. Oh, sorry. Arch your back. Yeah. Come up more. And right there, now squeeze right here. Yeah, and a little less. Okay, pop your chest up. Like you're showing Don what you got. There you go, okay, that's much better. So <clears throat> everybody, that's the basis, and that's what we're gonna get into after the analysis. Let's take a quick break, get some water, get some coffee, whatever you need, and then we're gonna convert, we're all good? Okay.